एक मिनट हो हमजा कृष्णा प्रिया एंड रेहान प्लीज डू सॉल्व इट इट्स फ्रॉम योर इलेक्ट्रो केमिस्ट्री एंड डू लेट मी नो इफ यू आर अनेबल टू सॉल्व इट very good kv go for the next question if anyone have any doubt in the first question just let me know see very good as you can see uh, let me ask from other students uh, hamza hamza any answer for the first question the first question is quite easy you need to arrange this in increasing or uh, the strongest oxidizing agent the strongest oxidizing agent so you just need to the one which has highest value of e not r electrode potential basically all i want to say is that e not r directly proportional to oxidizing power or oxidizing agent and e not r inversely proportional to reducing power and reducing agent that's why you can see s2o8 has the highest value 2.05 so it will be the most oxidizing agent the strongest oxidizing agent go for the next this uh, this type of question has been asked so many times so please be careful <clears throat>
calculate the standard cell potential in volt of the cell in which the following reaction takes place this is a redox reaction you can see e not a standard electrode potential is given of ag plus and fe plus 2 and we need to calculate the value of fe plus 3 to fe fe and now it is also given we need to calculate the standard cell potential of the cell we need to calculate this just let me know if you are not able to solve this Uh, b is the wrong answer b is the wrong answer so can you explain this okay see first of all you are going to focus on this part let me show you you are going to focus on this reaction <clears throat> now as you can see this is your uh, just wait a minute. Yeah, this Fe plus two is going into Fe plus three. That means oxidation. That means it is a naught. And this is Ag plus into Az zero. That means reduction. That means it is at cathode. So you know the formula. E naught cell is equal to E naught cathode minus E naught anode. Okay. So <clears throat> E naught cathode cathode is what? Ag plus that means you are going to put the value of E naught Ag plus slash Ag plus slash Ag minus E naught E naught E naught is Fe plus two to Fe plus three Fe plus two to Fe plus three. So basically, whenever we are going to put the value of this, you need to uh, write the you need to write the reduction potential, not oxidation potential. So I'm going to write it here Fe plus three slash Fe plus two. Now, as you can see in the question that Ag plus slash Ag is directly given and that has a value x. But if you are going to look for this Fe plus 3 to Fe plus 2, that is not given directly. This is given Fe plus 2 to Fe and it is also given Fe plus 3 to Fe, but Fe plus 3 to Fe plus 2 is not given. So we need to do a little work, a little work on this to get. Fe plus 3 to Fe plus 2. So I'm going to write it here like this. And then I'm going to get this value. How you can get the value of this? So <clears throat> as you can see, Fe plus 2. This is the given. This is given. So I'm going to write Fe plus 2 is going into Fe. How it can go? If it will gain 2 electron, it will be converted into Fe. And here I'm gonna assume that E1, E01 has a value which is Y volt. Y volt that is in the given in the question. And for the second, you can see Fe plus 3 is going in Fe. That means it will gain 3 electron. It will gain 3 electron. And it has a value we can write. Uh, it has a value. What, what value it will have? E2 naught has a value that is Z volt. Now, for this reaction, I'm going to write the delta G naught. For this reaction, I'm going to write the delta G naught one. Basically, delta G naught has a value which you have studied in naught cell. This is the value. This is the formula. So for this, delta G naught will be equal to minus N. N, you know that how many N is the number of electron. That is two. F is as it is and E has a value y or you can take it e naught one and for this delta g naught two will be equal to minus three minus into number of electron three f e naught two 
is that clear up to this yes or no yes sir <clears throat> now let's see how will you get this value which value how will you get e not fe plus 3 slash fe plus 2 so it's very easy how will you get if you are going to reverse this equation if you are going to reverse this equation and add reverse the first equation and then you are going to add this then you will be getting fe plus 3 plus 1 electron then you will be getting fe plus 2 what i just did it's very simple just concentrate here if you are going to reverse this this will be on the right hand uh, left hand side and fe on the right hand side already in the equation 2 so this fe fe will be cancelled and you can see two electron on the left hand side that will be uh, that will be gone into right hand side and two electron and three electron that will be cancelled with each other three electron minus two electron and you will be getting this now let's say it has a value in not 3 which has a value uh, you can take anything no. let's say a volt so for this g not 3 will have a value minus n that is 1 f e not cell e not cell has a value let's say e not 3 so this is your equation number 3 3 2 1 so what you are going to do you are, uh, you got this equation by adding this and this so you just need to do delta g not 3 will be equal to delta g not 1 plus delta g not 2 and as you can see you can easily write the value here 1 f e not 3 will be equal to g1 has a value that is minus 2 f e not 1 plus uh, uh, what we can write minus 3 f e not 2 as you can see but uh, first of all remember that you reverse this equation so there will be also a minus and then you are going to take f common and f will be cancelled and you can easily solve it e not 1 has a value that is y you are going to put and then z whatever value you will be getting from here you are going to put the value here and you will get your answer is that clear everyone yes sir okay so sir so why are we considering a g not value as positive I why are you considering uh, just considering uh, who said that that is a very good question question uh, anyone of uh, who was asking about why are you considering yes, sir krishna sir uh, yeah krishna g not yeah. sir why are we considering g not as positive and not negative uh, g not 3 positive where i i considered g not positive so g not 3 Z not three. Oh, it was negative. That that was by mistake. The formula is says that it is negative. Okay, that was by mistake. Thank you. And for uh, didn't realize that. Okay. Actually, this Oops. E not for what we say gives free energy is additive in nature. E not cell is not additive in nature. That's why we cannot do uh, E not plus one in plus two, but we can do Z not. Plus minus that's all. Okay, so we have to go for zero. Can I move to the next question, everyone? Ah, uh, please do write it and then let me know.
कैन आई चेंज द स्लाइड हमजा रेहान मारेटा यू जस्ट ज्वाइन प्रिया as fast as you can so that i'll be able to give you a practice paper in this class to cover, uh, i want to cover a practice paper for your jain men <coughs> जीरोक्टी Two is the value of number of electrons. Faraday's constant that is given ninety six thousand four hundred, and it is also given directly E naught. So you are going to put the value two, and you will be getting your answer. As if you are going to solve it, uh, we need to calculate in kilojoule per mole. So after this, you are going to divide it by thousand because this value only give you in <coughs> joule. Krishna. Rehan, yes sir. Okay. Okay. This question is quite good. <coughs> Consider the statement. Conductivity always increases with the decreasing concentration of electrolyte. If you are going to decrease the concentration, basically you are doing dilution. that means you are increasing the solvent and molar conductivity always increase with decreasing concentration of <coughs> electrolyte so please do solve it and let me know oh d is the wrong answer d is not the answer mj very good b yeah priya now you are right see <clears throat> basically when we go for conductivity conductivity defined for a unit volume unit volume now what you did you decreases the concentration you decreases concentration of electrolyte you decreases concentration of electrolyte so what will happen as you can see density of the ions will decrease density of the ions will decrease because 
density is equal to mass upon volume so density of the ions will decrease and hence conductivity decreases and here it has been written conductivity always increases it's not right conductivity basically decreases with increase in uh, with decrease in concentration of electrolyte or with increase in dilution but molar conductivity always increases with decrease in so concentration of electrolyte or you can say with the dilution molar conductivity increases that's why option 1 or statement 1 is wrong and statement 2 is right <clears throat> is that clear yes sir okay rehan you are not giving any answer not responding at all oh, please do respond hamza and rehan i'm requesting both of you okay this is a very good question which one of the following graph between molar conductivity versus root c is correct oh very good y axis represent your what what it represent molar conductivity and x axis represent root c c is the concentration so oh, hamza very good marita can you explain why the c is correct one uh, sir the ions formed on hydrolysis of nacl is na plus which is smaller than k plus so uh, there will be more h2 molecules around it so its conductivity will be less oh, oh okay why the conductivity decreases when h2o is more surrounded what happens so its mobility will decrease the mobility decrease value. because it's uh, it is surrounded by more and more water basically hydration energy increases so see everyone what will happen you know both are a strong electrolyte and this is your na plus and this is your k plus which is in aqueous solution this is also in aqueous solution and you should know uh, this hydration energy or hydration enthalpy inversely proportional to size of ions so you know k plus is greater than the uh, wait a minute size of ions and na plus is lower so that's why na plus will be surrounded by more and more water and it will be heavy so it will not move that much easily that's why its conductance decreases so if you are going for this you can see this is your wrong this is wrong because you can see kcl has lesser molar conductivity which is wrong you can see again this is also wrong because kcl has molar conductivity lower that means kcl is moving slowly but it is not right since na plus is moving slowly due to the uh due to uh, it's surrounded by more and more water and you can see this is cutting each other that means it is also wrong so the answer is this okay okay from here uh, i just remembered a a question that is very good and i would like to ask from all of you na plus and then comes your k plus and then comes your csa can anyone tell me can anyone arrange this in increasing or decreasing order of size li plus na plus k plus cgm plus <laughs>
any answer Narita, any answer? KV. No. See, <clears throat> generally, down the group, size increases. Generally, down the group, size increases, and this cesium will be the largest one, then rubidium, then potassium, then sodium, and rubidium is also there. Okay, but when it is in aqueous solution, lithium plus will be the largest one, then comes your sodium, then potassium, then rubidium, and then cesium. Why? Because this lithium, due to its a smaller size of ions, it will be more hydrated and water will stretch it so, so much that it will be the largest one in its group in aqueous state. Are you getting my point? Hamza, Rehan, Marita, Priya, KV? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's why this uh, this is also very important because generally a student does uh, since CS is in the seven, uh, sixth period, it will be the largest, but this is this scenario is different and it's from a block element. You should take care of it. Now moving to the next. This is also a question which you can call it especially from redox, redox and redox reaction and this electrochemistry are quite similar. That's why I just gave you a question from this. <clears throat> Everyone knows that what is disproportionation reaction? Yes or no? Does everyone know? Yes, sir. Okay. What yes, it is? Sir, both oxidation and reduction are there. Same element, you get oxidized. And <clears throat> reduced. Simultaneous. <clears throat> so you just need to check the oxidation state and reduction. Wrong answer. KV. Wrong answer it is. Very good, Anja. The answer that you have said, this is an example of decomposition reaction. 
you can see is this will be the answer this will have plus 1 this will have minus 1 this will have plus 2 this will have zero so going in plus 1 to zero that means reduction taking place and going in in plus 1 to plus 2 oxidation taking place so the answer is d is that clear yes sir can i move to the next See, this type of question is quite easy. You just need to remember the concept. Basically, E naught R directly proportional to oxidizing power or oxidizing agent and E naught R inversely proportional to reducing power. Since we need to uh, arrange this in oxidizing power, you need to see which one is the largest one, uh, which one has the largest value so as you can see which one has the largest value plus 1.81 plus 1.67 so answer will be co plus 3 then comes your um, pb plus 4 then comes your uh, c plus 4 and then after that bi plus 3 will come so this will be your answer since we not are directly proportional to the oxidizing power so this will be your answer is that clear and this concept is very important might be there will be a question on this can i change the slide e not r value increases oxidizing power increases e not r value decreases reducing power increases <coughs> you know that <coughs> Lithium, which has the most negative E naught R value, and fluorine, which has the most positive E naught R value. If you remember the <clears throat> electrochemical series, this is the most reducing agent, and this is the most oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent, right? That means oxidizing power. Most positive, that means it has the E naught R value greatest, and it has the E naught R value lowest. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Next question. This looks complicated, like uh, it is quite tough, but it is not. It's very easy. <clears throat> if you know the formula and if you know the simple calculation of multiplication and division, you can easily do this. You can easily do this. Just let me know when you are done with this. <clears throat>
That's very good. Priya, this is the right answer. Any other answer from anyone? See, if the standard electron potential that is 2 volt that is given at 300 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant K for the reaction, we are going to use uh, Nernst equation and in which we are going to use the formula of the equilibrium constant. So, you know, E naught has a value that is RT upon NF ln K. And if you are going to calculate K, this all value will be in the power of this like you can write E raised to the power NF, NF upon RT, NF upon RT and this is, this is what, uh, this is here. So you are going to write E naught here. That means you can see E naught on the, uh, E naught will be multiplication, uh, E naught will be in the multiplication of NF. So you are, you are going to write NF into E naught upon RT. This is the simple maths. And then you are going to put the value E into N has a value that is you can uh, calculate it from the uh, equation that is 2. Faraday's value is also given 96,000, 96,000 and then E naught has a value that is 2 upon R has value 8 and then T has a value 300 Kelvin. If you are going to solve it, you will be getting E raised to the power 160. Very good, Marita. KV. Yes, sir. Let me know when to change the slide. Can I change the slide? Yes, sir. Now, oh, this is the question. Consider the following reduction process. This, the reducing power of the metal increases. You know that I already told you, E naught R inversely proportional to reducing power. That means the one which has the lowest value of E naught will have the greatest power of reducing. That means you can see the lowest power I can think is C plus 2. 
so this will be the okay very good now i'm going to share another page uh, please do it this questions i'm uh, just please do it Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I'll be gone for uh, three to four minutes uh, to open the door. Please do it.
Okay, <clears throat> everyone. Just let me know if you are not able to solve it. No, that's good. You have got the answer, right answer. Uh, MJ. So I explain the first one. You can see an alkene having molecular formula this much. <clears throat> On ozonolysis, it's glyoxol and 2,2 dimethyl butane, 1,4 diol. So I'm going to write the structure first in this way. Uh, butane it is and you can see uh, 2 comma 4 first of all CHO is here as well as CHO is here and 2 comma 4 dimethyl this is your CH3 as well as this is your CH3. Now the another product is glyoxol what is glyoxol so it's also very easy uh, ethane it's 1 comma 2, 2 diol dimethyl. yeah ethane 1 comma 2 diol this is the scenario. So no, we need to... first one it is 2 comma 2 dimethyl sir not 2 comma 4 2 comma 4 it is just wait a minute 2 comma 2 dimethyl butane 1 comma 4 diol it is right yes sir so so you did it 2 comma 3 right oh sorry 2 comma 4 it is now if you want to do the Ozonolysis first, if you want to get the alkene, what you need to do, I'm going to write this in this way to get the product. Just wait a minute. It will be very helpful. So you are going to write this and then you are going to write in this. Way. And again, this part as this way, C double bond O and H is there as well. And this C double bond OH is connected with CH3. So I'm going to write here CH3 and then this CH3. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, please. You just need to write in this way so that it will be very helpful. So CHO after this, there is CH and then there is CH3. <clears throat> Two, three. And then you can write in this way, C double bond O. And then C is there, and then there is CH3, and then you can write CH3 here, and then again CH2 is there, and then C double bond O. And what you need to do, just remove this double bond. Just remove this double bond and put a double bond between this carbon and this carbon, and you will be getting CH. You can see this is your CH double bond CH. This is also your CH, and then a single bond then a single bond between this carbon and this carbon so i'm going to write ch and then a double bond again between this carbon and this carbon so you are going to write ch and again you can see a single bond between this carbon and this carbon so there will be ch ch2 i have written it okay and then you can go for the rest one c and it is connected with two ch3 so this will be your main product is that clear? What you need to do? If you want to get the alkene, just write the double bond on the same side and remove O2 and keep double bond between that two carbon and you will get your product. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 carbon. And if you are going to count the hydrogen, it will be 2. Is that clear? Any answer for the second one or the third one? Okay, I'm going to explain. Can I raise this? KV? Yes, sir.
for the second one in the last class that we discussed about ionic equilibrium and it's uh, very easy i'm going to show you this is about your ksp so see how easy it is first of all when equal volumes of the following solution are mixed volumes are equal agcl uh, when equal volumes of following solution are mixed precipitation of agcl will occur only with so what you need to do it's very simple if you want to get get precipitate what you need to do it's very simple if ag plus into cl minus the concentration of ag plus into cl minus if greater than ksp then only precipitate will occur if it is <clears throat> greater than ksp then it, uh, then precipitate will Okay, now volumes are equal. Volumes that is given equal. <clears throat> so concentration basically, if equal volumes, if equal volumes are mixed, that means volume is volume becomes double. That, that means concentration will be half. You can see molarity is basically. Number of moles of solute upon volume. If this will be double, then this will be half. They are inversely proportional to each other. Now, in case of Ag plus, you can see. Let's take an example. In case of Ag plus, uh, first example, ten raised to the power minus four is there. Upon you can write the volume as double. And for Cl minus, you can see it is also given that. 10 raised to the power minus 4, and the volume is double. So if you are going to get the value of Ag plus into Cl minus, it will be 10 raised to the power minus 8 upon 2, and then you can solve it 2.5 into 10 raised to the power minus 9, which is greater than Ksp because Ksp has a value 1.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 10, and hence this will be your answer. What you need to do? Just multiply this Ag with Cl minus. Just multiply this Ag plus concentration of Ag plus with the concentration of Cl minus. If the value of that multiplication is greater than the Ksp, then precipitation will form. Is that clear? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> What about the next one? any answer for the third one <clears throat> nico we need to talk, uh, talk about this diamagnetic paramagnetic wrong diamagnetic paramagnetic not wrong any answer for the third one this is the question based on ncert <clears throat> mj priya krishna rehan and hamza no answer no one is replying am i audible to all of you yes okay so if you don't know if you don't remember the concept just let me know see you have studied about the ligands also on the basis of a strength no very good weak field ligand and a strong field ligand a strong field ligand generally i am talking about generally paired up and when they paired up when the electron is paired they are diamagnetic and when we are going to talk about weak field ligand it won't pair up 
and if they want pair up that means they are paramagnetic unpaired electron will be there now you need to <clears throat> see co which is a very strong ligand cn is also a strong ligand but when you are going to talk about cl minus fluoride chloride bromide they are weak field ligand they are weak field ligand these are a strong field ligand so since they are a strong field ligand so they they will pair up and they will be diamagnetic and this will be paramagnetic so if you are going for option b you can see nico all four nic and all four minus two are diamagnetic but this is paramagnetic is that clear everyone yes sir this is also a very good question from chemical bonding and i hope you can do this oh, please do it D U R G, very good. See, O two is a very famous molecule. According to V V T, it was diamagnetic, but actually it is paramagnetic. So first of all, this is wrong statement. O two is diamagnetic. N two is less stable than O two. It is also, you can see, N two is less stable than O two. It is also wrong statement because N two has triple bond. Which has bond enthalpy greater than O2, so it is not less stable than O2. He2 is a stable and has bond order one. This is also wrong because He2 does not exist. It is an uh, what we say. It is noble gas and it doesn't form bond. So basically, it will not have bond order one. Bond order basically says that how many bonds they are making in the molecule or compound. So this is the option only. O2 is paramagnetic. And if you are going to do the electronic configuration according to MOT, if you are going to do the electronic configuration according to MOT, this will be sigma one s. Then comes your sigma star one s. Then comes your sigma two s. Then sigma star two s. Then in O two, this comes uh, sigma star two s after sigma star two s. Now uh, sigma two p z. And then pi two p x is equal to pi two p y. After this comes pi star two p x is equal to pi star two p y. Now I'm gonna show you how many electron does O two have? Eighty sixteen uh, electron. So in S two electron will go two electron, two electron, two electron. Eight electron distributed. Now come to this two electron. Ten electron, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and then 15 16 you can see unpaired electron that side is paramagnetic and the unpaired electron present in pi star 2 px and pi star 2 py so the answer is d and i think it's very very easy is that clear now go for the next question number 5 the following compound is used as hypnotic antiseptic algesic and an anti inflammatory compound and it is a very famous compound basically and you have to remember this this compound is analgesic so this is it go for the next one iupac of this
just wait a minute there is a correction in this are you psc of this one two three okay there is a bond that is methyl group is there the negative is not there that was missing very good the answer is 3 5 3 methoxy pentane you can see 1 2 3 4 5 and at 3 there is ethyl and at 3 there is methoxy so the answer is c very good now go for the seventh one conductivity of this m nscl solution is this what happens to this conductivity if extra 100 ml of h2o will be conductivity we are talking about conductivity any answer very good priya marita uh any answer from uh, kv and uh, marita why option a see what will happen here as i told you in the previous explanation of uh, conductivity number of ions per volume basically decreases due to the increase in volume number of ions per volume in decreases and that's why conductivity also decreases and the answer will be d this explanation i gave you in the previous question of the electrochemistry So please be careful. Go for the next. question number 
that is very easy please do it question number 8 the product formed when halimide is treated with a mixture of br2 and a strong naoh halimide oh, no 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 not any lip it will not form any lip if you are going to treat this halimide this is your thalimide and you are going to treat this with br2 naoh degradation will take place very good kv so what will happen to nabr then another product na2co3 one of the carbon will be less and then h2o will be and then you can see the main product that you will get is this product will be totally eliminated and this will be oxidized and nitrogen will come here that means you will be getting you cannot say aniline this is because carboxylic acid is also there so this has a name anthra nilic acid anthra nilic acid it is please do write it everyone done with the eighth one yeah this is also the good question that i already explained if you are going to connect that two point about the alkalies mobility very good mobility will be this because size of ions increases hydration enthalpy decreases that means surrounded by less water so it can move easily rb plus then k plus then na plus then li plus go for the question number 10 Question number ten is completely based upon board exams, and I think you can do it. See. the one which can do oxidizing as well as reducing you need to check the oxidation state of this carbon has an oxidation state of plus 2 here 
Sulfur has an oxidation state of plus four here. Sulfur has an oxidation state of minus two here, and phosphorus has a minus three. Now, as you will look at this, carbon can go in plus four as well. That means it can act as a reducing agent, but sulfur can go for minus two as well as plus six. It can go up to this minus two to plus six. Sulfur is at lowest. and phosphorus is also at lowest so this sulfur can go higher that means this will act as reducing agent and this can act as oxidizing agent as well that's why d will be our answer okay yes sir go for the question number 11 Which of the following sets of quantum numbers represent the highest stability of atom? N is equal to four, L is equal to one. That means four p. M is equal to zero, S is equal to half. Plus half. N is equal to four. This, this, this. Uh, is there any difference in this? Yeah, four S is there. N is equal to four, L is equal to two, M is equal to one, S is equal to plus half. Uh, that means four d is there. And then N is equal to three, L is equal to m. <coughs> can anyone tell me on which factor we are going to decide that it is more stable that's good you know that n plus l rule if lower that means it is less energetic first of all stability is inversely proportional to energy if energy increases stability decreases and you know that <clears throat> n plus l basically decides the energy the one which has greater value of n plus l will be more energetic so you need to count this you will be getting 5 here for option a 4 for option b 6 for option d and 4 again for option d but here the n plus l rule says that when the value or sum of n plus l will be same then decide with n if the value of n is lower then it is lesser energy then it will have lesser energy that's why d will be our answer is that clear everyone yes or no yes sir go for the next question number 12 so can you scroll a bit down yeah yeah
Yeah, that's a good answer. Correct answer. See, it's very easy. If you are going to treat this CH3C double bond O, OH, with SOCl2, with SOCl2, what will, will happen? This will be removed and chlorine will be added there. So it will form a sil halide. This will be the A. After this, you are going to treat this with anhydride AlCl3 and benzene. So there will be alkylation take place. Benzene will be uh, like this. So there will be alkylation take place. And you know there will be positive charge that will be going and adding directly on the benzene ring. This is your what? This is your B. And now you are going to treat this not C. Now you are going to treat this with HCN. You know, hydrogen cyanide will form. This will go like this and CN negative is there. That will attack here. And H positive is there. So it will attack here. So what you will be getting? This will be your C basically. So this will be like this. And you can see O, o will have H and this will have CN. And again, this is your CH. Now, if you are going to treat this with H plus, this will be oxidized into carboxylic acid. And it will be C, C double OH, you can write. And then CH3 is there and CN is also there. Wait a minute. Where is OH now? Oh, wait a minute. I just did it wrong. If you are going to treat this with acid, then this carbo uh, cyanide ion will be converted into carboxylic acid, C double OH, and then CH. CN, if you are going to do the hydrolysis in the presence of H plus, then cyanide will be converted into carboxylic acid. Okay, so this is your D, and hence the option is. Can we move to the next part? Yes, sir. How yes, is your preparation going, everyone? Now I'm just going to tick on the question, then you are going to solve that only. The one which is important. Go for the question number 20. And this will be for food and all the rest. That is Any answer? Just wait a minute. Delta is not, no, no, not D. Okay, I'm going to explain it. Focus here. It's given that C plus O2 that you are getting CO2 and it has delta H naught that is equal to minus X kilojoule. And it's also given that 2CO plus O2, that is giving you 2 moles of CO2. And here delta H naught has minus Y kilojoule. Now, we need to calculate the enthalpy for the formation of 
CO for the formation of CO. Just wait a minute. I did a wrong. Yeah, it is B. This is your CO. We need to calculate the for the formation of CO. So what I'm going to do, it's very simple. I'm just going to divide this equation by two. Divide by uh, divide this equation by two. Now you will get another product like this. And now this will have delta H naught since we divided by two, it will be Y by two. And this is your equation number one, uh, two, and this is your equation number one. And what I'm going to do, since we need to prepare enthalpy of uh, a CO, so I'm going to reverse this. If I'm going to reverse this, this will have a value CO2 that will give you CO plus half O2. And now this has a value delta H naught that will be equal to positive Y by 2 because we reversed it. Now you can see this is your equation number 2. Again, this is not your equation. And now you are going to add this. If you are going to add this, you can see on the left hand side, this is your thing on the left hand side. This is your on the left hand side. This is on the left hand side. On the right hand side, this is your CO2. On the right hand side, you can see this is your CO plus half O2. Now, what you need to do, just solve it. You can see half O2, if it is going to move in this direction, left hand side, it will be one minus half, that will be half O2. That will give you CO. Now, what you just did, you just need to repeat it in this way. You just reverse this, so you got Y by two, and you added this in this. So there will be minus X. You are going to take LCM two, then Y minus two X. This will be your delta H naught formation of enthalpy of CO2, uh, CO, and that's why the answer will be B. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is it for today. I'll see you in the next class. Okay. Okay, all the best. I think this is your last class, right? Rehan, Krishna, MJ. Yes, sir.